All right. Wow, it's warm. And since it's warm, that's where we're going to study some thermal physics and problem solving in thermal physics. Many of the numerical problems that the IB will ask you to solve will be involving either this mixture method or the electrical method. Neither one is overly difficult, so it's worth taking some time to master these. Now, for both of these methods, we're going to assume that energy is conserved. And if that is true, all of your equations will be based on this fact here, that the initial energy equals the final energy, or that if energy is lost by one thing, it's going to be gained by another thing inside your system. Let's start with the mixture method. Here's the mixture method. To do some practice with this, you will need some paper, some calculators, maybe just one calculator, and a little bit of time. So get that stuff, pause it, read this, and see how you are going to start it. Hopefully, you began by saying that the energy lost by lead is going to be equal to the energy gained by the H. 2O. Now, I like to keep both of these positive. Now, fill in what goes in those if you haven't yet. This particular problem is not too complex because it only has one term on the left side, your lead, that's going to lose heat, that's going to be gained by the one term on the right side, which is your water. Now, keep in mind, these are all different terms from each other, and the delta T that I use, I always like to keep things positive by doing a big number minus a little number. Now, you don't have to do that. You can use traditional final minus initial, but then you might want to put a negative on one of those sides to keep your sign situation okay. Now, fill in your numbers. See how far you can get in order to find that specific heat capacity of lead. There, I filled in my numbers. Notice that I have a uh, the 100 minus the 45 degrees here for the lead, and then I've got the 45 minus the 35 degrees for the water on this side, then it's just a matter of solving for the C of lead. And hopefully you worked out the rest of the numbers and you ended up with a specific heat capacity of lead in the units of joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Now keep in mind you also could have had Kelvin. It would not have mattered. I assumed two significant figures here, so that's why you might notice some difference there. Uh, which I believe that is a reasonable value for the specific heat capacity of lead. For the electrical method, you are going to use usually something uh, like a resistor connected to a battery, uh, and you are going to usually immerse that in liquid or put it inside a metal substance and use that electrical heating to then see how much the substance you're trying to warm increases in temperature. Now, take a minute, read this, pause it, and you're going to start it in the same way you started the last one. Now that start should be assuming that whatever electrical input you have in joules is going to be equal to the energy gained by the substances that are sur surrounding the electrical resistor. Now uh, we'll simplify this even a little bit more by saying that electrical input can be power times time, and there's going to be two substances gaining here. We're going to have energy gained by the calorimeter plus the energy gained by the liquid. Now see if you can simplify this even more. Here I converted my power that was in watts to joules per second. My time of three minutes, I want that in seconds. So that becomes 180 seconds. And then I've got my two terms. These are all different M's and different C's because this is for the calorimeter and this is for the energy gained by the liquid. Now, as I fill in some more numbers, take note that it says that the liquid warms up to 19 degrees Celsius. That must also mean that the calorimeter also raises to the same temperature. So that's how I end up having a 4 degree delta T for both of those substances. Uh, hopefully you've got this far. Continue filling in and solve for this specific heat capacity of the liquid. Hopefully you got this far and I've rearranged to solve for the specific heat capacity of the liquid and that is going to be about 
2880 the units should be joules per kilogram per degree Celsius or Kelvin doesn't matter maybe we should just use two significant figures because that three minutes and we'll round that to about 2900 as my answer with these same units that is it Woo!